Thank you all for your, your comments this morning and uh, the discussion that we're about to have. Um, we, we talk a lot in this committee about the, um, the breakthrough that we saw with natural gas when uh, hydraulic fracturing came along. We were at a point where everyone was talking about, you know, the, the end is near type of a thing. And, and quite honestly, uh, our, our technologies are always um, moving forward. And we certainly hope that they are. And, and that was clearly a, a breakthrough when it comes to, uh, to um, the oil and gas sector and, and how it has advanced that forward. We've heard um, about the opportunities that we have now with, with energy storage technologies. Uh, but you've also, all of you, I think, have raised um, a few of the challenges that, uh, that we have. Uh, you've got some scientific uh, limitations. I think it was you, Dr. Sprinkle, that said, you know, we're going to need a new manufacturing paradigm. Uh, industrial acceptance is, is, is at issue. Um, so I guess the question that I would pose to all of you is, in order to, to, to really advance our our energy, um, our, our energy storage technologies, do we need a, a, a breakthrough? Do we need kind of the, the hydraulic uh, fracturing equivalent in order to advance us to that next level? And, and if so, what is it? Or do you think that we're just going to continue to kind of move along as we have been? And I, again, I throw it out to each of you for your input here. Go ahead, Dr. Sprinkle, uh, you get to start. Thank you. So I, there are tremendous opportunities for breakthroughs uh, in, in this uh, field. Where we're seeing now is where there's high value, we can make it work. But if we want energy storage kind of ubiquitously uh, deployed across the grid, it's going to have to be much cheaper. It's going to have to last a lot longer than it does today, and we're going to have to sh show that safety. And that's what through the R&D efforts is hopefully we can drive that down to where it's a natural grid asset to put on there. And for most of the kind of lower value applications, uh, storage can be able to provide that service. Good. That Mr. Cuthball? From, from our perspective in a, in a business, uh, the good news is we don't need a breakthrough, but breakthroughs are going to happen, as Dr. Sprinkle uh, suggests. So the technology we have today of lithium ion is mature and is at a cost uh, that is appropriate for a lot of grid and utility applications, and its cost will continue to decline. So today we see it as already available uh, to be in a mainstream utility planning and procurement uh, type of setting. Um, and the good news is that we will continue to have further technology evolution that will only open up more applications and, and lower costs to consumers further. Good. Mr. Morris? Yeah, I, I agree with that. For me, it was always a matter of economics, really. Can you get cheap enough batteries, uh, abundant production of batteries that can be used in um, numerous applications? Ultimately, electric vehicles is really what's kicked this off. Um, with lithium ion cells, you've had that really the last two and a half to three years. Um, now we see lithium ion cell costs. Uh, now there's one big contract at under $140 per kilowatt hour. Uh, even 2009, this was $1,000 per kilowatt hour in and around. So it was a case of actually waiting for these, uh, these industries to mature and to become cheap. And they get that with scale and, and other um, R&D benefits uh, through the cathode and anode. But ultimately, it's, it's coming down to scale. And the battery is getting better as well, not just through the actual cell itself, but you build these lithium ion batteries into packs and then they go into vehicles or they go into energy storage units. Now there's technology, software uh, management systems now control the energy within those battery packs. So that's improving battery life without necessarily the batteries themselves improving. So the whole system is becoming far more intelligent. And I think that's, that's going to drive the next, this next sort of five years. Very good. Mr. Seifarth. And uh, I agree with Simon, the, uh, the technology there is in the electronics. And it's interesting because we're still talking about hydro after 150 years. And it's the old reliable 
and it's changing with the times as well. So the innovation in hydro is coming with today's high technology pump storage facilities having the ability to react in milliseconds through a combination of hydraulic innovations and also electronic innovations. Um, you know, those automation, uh, automation controls, frequency control, full converter, uh, frequency control for hydroelectric turbines. So we have a reliable energy source in hydro and what we need now is some legislation to help advance that with the newer technologies. Think of it in a way of uh, having that great old Chevy car you had and the engine's still solid as a rock and you're getting more efficiency out of that car by putting in more technology. So it's the right sustainable thing to do. And uh, after all these years, we're, we're still, uh, you know, lucky enough to be talking about hydro as we talk about grid reliability, black start capability, and the security of the country. Very good. Thank you all.